So let's build a query. So for today, we have a fake scenario, which is that the president of my organization is having an event for the platinum members of our giving society um, and also a few of his friends. And he wants to know, um, has given to the library fund. So we're going to use a query today to gather all those people together and see their library fund giving. So um, first we're going to do our platinum giving society. And that is we store that in an attribute in our database. Um, this was one of the things that took me a while to find when I was first looking at WebView query because everything in WebView has the WebView name. So it's down here. It is now called custom fields. For you ever heard the word attribute and call them custom fields now. That's where they are. Hey, hold on, Stacy. Can we plug in a little bit later before the end of the hour? We have a whole cheat sheet for you. So that example right there of something that used to be called something database view is now called something totally different. We've written it all out for you so that we have a cheat sheet for you on that topic. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's great. I am excited about that cheat sheet. It's the kind of thing that I will be sticking to the wall in front of my computer for when I forget. What? Why can't I find solicitor? Oh yeah, it's fundraiser now. Okay, so 2025 giving circles description, we're going to select the platinum members. So this query should now find all platinum members of my giving circles. And the other thing that we want to show you is uh, this little nonsense spreadsheet that the president sent me with notes that he has and he said i want to make sure these people are all included in this event and i want to know about their library giving too so i have this nonsense spreadsheet but thankfully it does have razor's edge ids so if you don't know about this trick prepare for your life to be changed. This is probably one of the single most useful things in query. You have some silly spreadsheet that there's nothing tying these people together in Razor's Edge and you need them in a query. So you can do a one of query, which we will show you in a second. So I'm gonna just select this and copy it. And we're gonna go to my favorites and I'm going to say constituent ID choose the one of operator. I'm going to put my cursor here and I'm going to do control V to paste. And it has pasted all of those IDs here. In database view, you can do this, but it only takes 500 at a time. This web view now takes 2000 at a time, which I think everybody's very excited about. And because yes, some of us have copied and pasted thousands of IDs into a query before to get them in the same place. It's silly, but it works. So, um, so now we have, um, our constituent uh, giving circle equals platinum, or we have these random people that we also want included in our list. And we need to make sure and change this to an or. So those things, I don't even remember exactly what this looked like in database. Oh, it was a button down here, right? You selected the line and then you clicked the button. So now that's right here. We're gonna change this to or. Quick note on favorites, your favorites are now in alphabetical order. I'm sorry. I know that some of you have a, a very specific order that you like your favorites because when you do a certain kind of query, you just go through and click them in the order that you want them to show up in the output or whatever it is. And they're now in alphabetical order. Sorry, you'll have to deal. Let's see. The other thing that's slick about this is that you just click these once and they pop over. So it's not, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit quicker. It's definitely fewer quicks to, clicks to build a query in the new version. And the only other thing I wanted to mention while I'm on this criteria tab is that we do not have that find button anymore. There used to be a button with monoculars down here where you could click find and then type in the name of a field if there was something that you couldn't remember what it's called or which of these millions of nodes it's in. That is gone. So if you need that, you can use your browser's control F to search for for something, um, but it will not find things that are collapsed. So you'll have to, you know, at least be able to get close to it and then you can use your control F to find things. So um, I have no idea if anything like that is planned, but if that's something you use heavily, you'll you'll have to complain to Blackboard about that one. And on that note, we also will plug how to complain to Blackboard and where to go. We'll talk through all that, but we got to get through the query stuff first and we'll handle everybody's uh, burning questions. All right. Um, so let's look at the output tab. I want to um, put some things in this query so that I can run it and see who's showing up and get answers to some of my questions right here on this screen. So um, we are going to add some of my favorites. Constituent ID, always, 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 if you're outputting something in a query, put the constituent ID. So in a pinch, you can do that one of thing, right? So don't just do a bunch of names. So we'll do a uh, constituent ID name. Let's do spouse name. And I want a bunch of stuff in here because I want it to fill up the screen. So we're going to put in a bunch of address fields for fun. Cool things on this screen that you can now do. You can use the menu to edit the column heading, which I love, right? Um, oh, I was going to add my, I was going to add this guy because I want to edit this because it's 
crazy long, right? Nobody needs this. Let's see. So that's going to be way better. And the other thing you can do here that's amazing is you can reorder fields without having to go right click, move up, right click, move up, right click, move up 16 times. So I love that. I also want to add a summary field here because the president has asked me how much these people or if these people have given to the library. So we're going to do a summary. Love summaries in query. They are fun, but a little on the confusing side. So we're going to look at these a little bit. So I want to know total amount of gifts. And do I wish to apply applicable criteria? Yes, I do. And we're going to give this a minute to uh, load. This will take some time. I think people have noticed that most of all running queries in WebView tends to be a little bit faster than in database view, but sometimes it is not. And there's some things that take a bit to load. Um, so I want just gifts to library. So we're going to do fund description equals library. Notes about this box and campaigns, funds, and appeals. You can only search by description, so the name of the fund. So if I tried to search by SQ450, it would probably not find it. You also have to know what it is, right? Because there's not a just show me all of them button here on equals. If you do, if you select one of or some of the other ones, I think there is a button that you can get to them. So we'll look at that on a different field. The other problem with campaigns, funds, and appeals currently is that you cannot select or type in or find inactive campaigns, funds, and appeals in query currently. This I suspect will be fixed because that seems not, not sustainable in the long term, but currently they're not in there. Um, okay, what else did I want to do? Oh, gift type here. I want to know about pledges and existing gifts. So I want to include a bunch of a bunch of gift types. So we're going to do one of if I click here, I can get this show all I could start typing and select them all myself, but I could also go to show all and then I have a whole list. And we're going to select all and then I'm going to uncheck all the things that have payment in them. So let's search for pay and then I can uncheck all the payments because I just want to know about pledges and kind of one time gifts. There's also some other options in here that none of us actually know what they are because we haven't played with them yet. So GL reversal and amendment now exist in this list. I don't know really why. And actually, we should probably switch these two right for one time gifts. You all have your rules about how you do this. You know, you know which gift types you want to select. Okay, so now we're going to do what we're working on here is outputting a summary field that shows these gift types to the library restoration fund. And we're going to say, okay. And I am going to change the column heading on this to library gifts and pledges. And I'm going to move that up. All right. Um, checking notes, checking notes. All right, let's go to the sort tab. So this also is the same as ever. We're going to sort by the total amount of gifts and something kind of weird happens, which is why I wanted to show you this. So it's gonna pop up this, the summary field criteria box here. I don't think I need it here. I just want it to output it and I don't wanna change anything. So I'm gonna say, okay, but it confused me the first time it happened. So if this happens to you, if you try to sort by a summary field, when it pops up like this, it's a little strange. So just say, okay. I want the summary field as it was before. I do want to sort this descending. So that's right here in my little menu box. Um, and as before, we had this little guy. So you can drop it down and see what it is. All right. Um, all right. Let's talk about the options tab. So this is cool. This is where your save <laughs> options exist and all of this stuff you'll recognize from old file menu stuff that was kind of buried in database view. I love that this is now front and center. One important thing that I was telling someone yesterday, I didn't even know any of this existed it, until I've been using Razor's Edge for over a year. Very embarrassing, but it happens to the best of us. So gift processing, if you have soft credits in your system, you want the query to, I mean, my most common selection is soft credit gifts to both. So use a mountain grid. So what happens here is if you have donor selected, it will only consider the person if they have hard credits. If you have recipient selected, it will only consider people with soft credits for certain gifts. And if you have both, it will consider both the donor and the soft credit recipient. So, so I like to use both for this. Other things on this page, all the advanced processing things with SQL and select from queries, 
for those of you using the API, this copy query JSON is super slick and you can basically copy this and paste this query criteria into the API to run queries on an ad hoc basis in Power Automate. So love that. Checking anything else on here? Oh, let's go ahead and save this. We'll save it. Save button pops up. The category is working right now. Sometimes when you go to save a query, there is nothing in this category dropdown. So if you encounter that, go ahead and open a case. With the That's our update for today. Sometimes in WebView, you'll click on menus and nothing will be there. So yeah. just keep, keep yeah. rolling. So my official favorite feature in new WebView query is this little guy right here, copy link. So I have copied a link to the query and I am now going to email this to somebody. So in my organization, I can just paste this into Teams. I can paste it into an email. I can send it to whoever I want. And she can now go directly to this query without me having to say, it's in the general folder and it's called this long annoying name, right? So it's so easy to share queries and query results with people. So two some way up to Blackboard for that one. That's incredible, sharing the query. I think the larger question everybody has is, are you using the new Outlook? Is that what I saw there? I am using the new Outlook and I really like it. <laughs> We're gonna have to, all right, I'm not gonna go any farther. We're gonna, we'll tackle that in a future webinar, continue. All right, so we have now saved our query and shared it. And let's look at the results. Let's see what it does. So this should hopefully not take too long because we don't have very many results in this query. Um, it looks like we have 14 people that are either members of our Platinum Giving Society or are on that list from our president. And here is, here's the things to note. So as before, if you click on a record, I think in database view, you double click on it here, you just single click and it opens up this little guy that shows you the full record in this little box. You can't move this or resize it or anything. So there's some tricks, but if you're like me and like to, you know, look through this and see who lives in whatever state or likes to scroll through these records and fix things, you just do your normal stuff where you rearrange tiles here and then this will stay on top, right? So I can look at Graham's information and then when I go to my next record, it'll have that same tile on top. So you know how you used to be able to select a default tab for the record to open to? That's how you do that here. The other thing that you can do, which I think is cool, is if you want to open the record in a new tab, you hold your control key down and click on the row and it'll open the record up in a whole other page, right? So this is how, if you wanted to look at multiples at once, you would open these tabs up and then arrange them on your screen so you can see them all. I love that the row numbers are included by default because I always had to go in and find those uh, in database view and it's kind of buried and I could never remember where it was. So anyway, I love that that's there. Um, name is formatted last, first, middle, and I don't think you could change this. So I think if you're using the name field um, in a way that requires a specific format, you'll have to probably create an address of your citation or something. So just things to keep aware of. There's just a little strength comes some strange things there. So we have so many columns that we can't see the end of it, right? So there's a couple of things we can do. We have this scroll bar up here. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom. So, or you can zoom your browser with your menu up here, but you can do uh, hold your control key down and then scroll your mouse button, your mouse wheel, and it'll make everything smaller. Now, this will also make everything in your browser smaller, right? This is your browser scroll. So if you do that and you don't, like it, then you have to remember to scroll it back up to normal size. But that's how you can see all of that if you have lots of columns. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about, we're ready to talk about exporting from query. So I do not need to export this, right? Because I sent a link to this query to my coworker who wants to see it. But if you do like to export, you need to use extreme caution when exporting out of query. So here's my little button to export it. And actually, I do want to show you how it works because it is so much easier than exporting queries in database view. I'm going to press this button. It's going to run and think about it for a second. And it is going to download a CSV right here with the query name in the title and it's done. It takes about one second. It's amazing. So I love that. However, I also want to make sure that you are aware that exporting out of query is dangerous. So in your Razor's Edge Essentials training, you should have learned that query is a grouping tool. Query is not a reporting tool. So we have reason to believe that query will be the new export someday. So this advice may change and there may be some rules that go along with that. But for example, let's just put in 
the constituent code into our output. For those playing along at home, what's going to happen is, where is my constituent code? Oh, I had it in my favorites. There it is. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to get a whole bunch more rows in here, right? Graham's going to have three or four rows because he has a bunch of of constituent code. So if I export this and then I try to send a letter, right? I'll get three letters per gram and I don't wanna do that. So you need to use extreme caution when you are exporting out a query, especially for things like mailing lists or financial reporting, because they are not designed to give you one row per gift or one row per constituent. It's designed to give you one row per query criteria. So please, please, please be careful. We still recommend creating queries, but then going to database view and using the export function for those things, for financial reporting and mailing lists. And really for financial reporting, you should use uh, gift detail and summary and those kinds of things too. So 